for a long time now, I've wanted some office space out in my yard, kind of facing the forest where I can work and kind of have a peaceful environment, but it's been a bit of a project. First, I had to level out the ground, kind of build up a retaining wall, get my concrete pad, and then start to build the 12 by 16 structure, which was originally just a storage shed and didn't make a ton of sense because the double doors faced the retaining wall, so it'd be kind of hard to get things in and out. But now the project's starting to come together as we transition it to that home office with a spot on the side where I extended out the roof to park my tractor. Now this is gonna be completely off grid and not only am I gonna power this structure with the Delta Pro Ultra X and the Smart Home Panel 3, but this is also gonna be kind of the center of power and solar because it's about the best place in my yard. And then I'm gonna bring 100 amps over to a future 2000 square foot shop. So I'm really gonna leverage the capability of this unit as we build out those structures over time. And it's obviously more than capable of running something like this home office. So let's take a look at the wiring for the Smart Home Panel 3. And it is recommended to have a licensed electrician install that. But before we do that, let's check and see how how much of the six kilowatts at 10 a.m. are we bringing in from the one solar input on the Delta Pro Ultra X? Now, overall, we have a great day. And even at 10 a.m., I'm bringing in 3,000 watts, and we've moved from 0% battery state of charge to 17%. So we'll continue to monitor throughout the day. When it comes to wiring for the Smart Home Panel 3, it is recommended to have a licensed electrician. So we are not grid tied. That's why that black piece of Romex is coming up. That's gonna be my alternate power. If the batteries run out, I can run a 50 amp generator inlet and power the circuits from the SHP3. Then we're connecting our main trunk from the battery inlets, which give you three inputs. And I'm only gonna be plugging my Delta Pro Ultra X into one of those three. So you can really expand this system all the way out to 120 kilowatt hours, which is pretty insane. Now, along the way, we're gonna wire a few more circuits. And remember, this is just my office. So really, we're doing a few multi-gang boxes for our light switches, doing some interior lights and some exterior light circuits, and then also doing a couple outlet circuits that we'll be running in. And that is before I start to run my mini split system in here, which would be another 240 volt circuit that I need to get up and running. So once I insulate this, I can start to heat and cool the space. So taking a closer look at the Smart Home Panel 3, now a lot of people are probably gonna opt for swapping out their main electrical panel. And this knockout right here is where your 200 amp breaker is gonna go. Since I'm doing an off-grid application, it's a little bit different. And let's go ahead and open that up so we can look at the inside of this panel. So you can see we have our main lugs coming from the battery side. And then that's where you'd actually insert your 200 amp breaker. But I just have my my two different hots and my neutral coming in from my generator inlet. So on the exterior, I just removed this because we're, doing, we're gonna do the siding. I have the generator inlet, the 50 amp, and then that goes to a 50 amp breaker on the exterior. And then that could feed my panel and all the circuits if I'm not using battery power in the Delta Pro Ultra X. But what I've really liked about the Smart Home Panel 2 and the Smart Home Panel 3 is you can use name brand breakers. So that means you can go down to your home improvement center or you can just use the Square D Home Line or the Square D QOs or the Siemens breakers that you already have and start building out your circuits here on your two different bus bars. So overall, Pretty impressive how far EcoFlow has come, and now we have whole home systems that we can utilize and start to leverage kind of a combo of a DIY professionally installed system to offset our power consumption or completely eliminate our dependence on the grid. But don't forget backup power. That is a big use case for myself. Now I'm in more of a rural setting, so losing power is multiple times per year. And believe it or not, I actually used it the other night while just setting up for this video. It came in extremely handy. So let's look at that application, but let's check our state of charge here at noon. And we are over 3000 watts, still cranking. The sun is still shining and we're almost to 50% state of charge. And then for a backup application to back up your home, usually I do have some type of scenario, but during the charging of the Delta Pro Ultra X for our off-grid shed application, the power actually went out. And my use case at home is kind of extreme, but by chance now the Delta Pro Ultra X has all the capability I need to actually replace a Delta Pro Ultra and a Delta Pro 3. Why that is, is because the X now has a 30 amp 
240 volt outlet and also a 50 amp 240 volt outlet. And I have two generator inlets that run to two independent panels in my home. So I need to power both those panels to power all my lights and then power all my receptacles and my critical loads such as my 240 volt well pump. So now I have still 92% battery remaining. I can power all night and all the next day if I need to with this type of unit, which really highlights the advantage of the 12,000 watt output and the two separate 240 volt outlets that come with the as compared to some of the previous units or some of the other ones on the market. Let's jump back into our solar testing at 2 p.m. Where are we at for solar input and also state of charge? The time of year is fall, so we're gonna start diving off pretty quickly as the sun goes down, but at 2 p.m. we're still running 2,500 watts and 61% state of charge. Now, what about the solar input part of the equation? This is critical if you're really trying to set up an off-grid scenario where you run the generator as little as possible. For the Ultra X, it has 10 kilowatts of total solar input. That's across two different charge controllers, five kilowatts a piece, and the voltage range runs from 80 volts to 500 volts and up to 15 amps max. Now that'll come in off the left-hand side of the inverter through two sets of MC4 connectors. Those plug into a disconnect box that comes with the unit, and then you'd hardwire your wires into the disconnect box. Now mine's a little bit of a temporary setup before we insulate and cover our walls, and then I'll wire everything up permanently to the disconnect box, and then that flexible whip gives you some ability to move the unit around and keep everything plugged in. And then currently I'm running 14 410 watt Q cell panels, which I actually got off Facebook Marketplace, and I got almost six kilowatts of solar from a hardware cost of about 2,400 bucks, and then I just installed those yesterday to get everything set up so we could start bringing that into the Ultra X and testing it out. Now I took seven panels in series and I have two strings of those that I brought into parallel and that's going into one of the charge controllers. So I'm in somewhat of an over paneled scenario in one charge controller, but I want to leave that other charge controller for future expansion for a ground mount solar array where I might need some more capability when we're powering the new workshop. So let's go ahead and look at our results through the EcoFlow app for the day. And this is the best app on the market by far. I don't think there's really any comparison. All right, you can see we have about 100 watts coming in, so we're not gonna get much more solar today, and we're at 70%. Pretty impressive, honestly. We started at 0%, and it should go without saying, you shouldn't drain your batteries all the way down to 0%, or necessarily all the way up to 100% if you're trying to get as many cycles as possible and get as long of a battery life as possible. But we can actually look at the bar chart and this gives us a complete picture at the solar input for the day. And we are just under 20 kilowatt hours from this six kilowatt array throughout the day pretty good this was a very sunny day but in the fall so in the summer technically we could do better but something to keep in mind we can do much much worse on overcast days so when you're sizing your off-grid capability really you got to plan for some of those overcast days as well but this is starting to give me my solar input my battery capacity and overall system needs as i better understand my loads for this home office and eventually that workshop that we're going to be putting together now let me know what questions you guys have down in the comments under the video thanks to ecoflow for sponsoring this video and providing the ultra x and the small home panel 3 and if you guys think this is a little bit beyond what you're looking for don't forget EcoFlow has updated the Delta 3 lineup of portable power stations. You can check this video out right here and we'll walk you through the three different sizes that might fit your needs a little bit better. And if you're really looking for the right size module for your home backup, check out this video right here. I'll walk you through the Delta Pro 3, which is also a strong contender depending on what your critical loads are for your own home. So thanks for joining me on this video and we'll catch you on one of those next ones. Take care.